35 types of psychotic yet socially accepted behavior. According to Reddit, number 35. Having your dogs in a small cramped urban apartment and getting them prescription drugs for their anxiety. Yeah, that's pretty shitty. That is pretty shitty. But is the jury out on whether or not people think that? I mean, well, I guess as long as it's okay, people going to deal with it. Someone responds, I'm going to add on people who get dogs as practice for having children. <laughs> then after the children are born, they ignore the dog. Same type of people. A comment from 123456Potato. Mm. Number 34. Healthcare profiteering. Yes, money is needed to develop treatments and garner people's best efforts. My issue is with the greed, the fraud, and the corruption keeping costs astronomical for something many argue should be a fundamental right. Someday we'll live in that utopia where people who have a problem and need medication will have access to that medication. And if you heard a skip in the music, you're not crazy. I accidentally scrolled down on a <clears throat> the music as opposed to the uh, the volume. Give me a second. I need to adjust this mic. I'm leaning very uncomfortably into it. Give me a second. And that should be much better. As we continue, we go to number 33. YouTube celebrities, reality TV celebrities, they can all fuck off. Yeah, fuck them. Only I'm cool. That's what I'm talking about. Number 32. <laughs> okay. Work in general. Even a basic 9 to 5 job, spending your time doing something that you don't like so that you can live is crazy. Well, what choice do we have? What choice do we have? Oh my god. <laughs> Someone says, I think just reducing working hours would do wonders for the general population. Man. If only there were one easy solution, you know? Continuing up, number 31. I mean, headbanging is kind of odd if you think about it too much. Well, I think that's kind of the point. I think headbanging is, it's almost like a, well, obviously some people are just doing it, not thinking about what it is, but other people almost want to say, fuck it, you know, with that, I don't care. I don't care, but it feels great until it doesn't, says someone responding. Unbelievable. Number 30. I can't say it really is socially accepted, but I just like how some people believe that they can just bully and harass those working in retail. Yeah. Some people need to tone it the fuck down, my dude. You know, like just because people out here work in retail don't mean that they're not like means suddenly that they're not people. There are plenty of people who treat service workers as punching bags. And the fact that they even see that as an option during an interaction annoys me. And for the most part, employees can't call the person out on their bullshit because they might lose their job. It's the whole dance of abuse and acceptance from management. Pretty shitty. Pretty shitty. Number 29 doing a good deed than posting online what a good deed you did so that others can praise you as a wonderful human being Ooh, doing it for the wrong reasons baby well I don't even know what to say number 28 drinking constantly and advertising how much you drink on Facebook sneaking alcohol everywhere talking about alcohol a lot being a box wine mommy getting drunk nightly, spending all your money at the bar, making the fact that you drink a personality trait. Alcohol glorification culture just gotten to a ridiculous point if you step back and look at it. It's completely overshadowing alcoholism as an actual problem and instead of promoting it as just having a good time. Well, the thing about alcohol, man, going back as far as, you know, weed initially being f fucked out of existence because, you know, hemp was a, a, a problem for some people. Um... Or I say I should say some some people with money. Uh, it's it's the one that they chose, 
you know? It's the one that they chose to be okay. So, as terrible and terrifying as alcoholics are because, you know, they're jumping behind the wheels of cars and that's that's socially cool in our country, you know? Yeah. Who is that? I appreciate you cog whistle, you know? The fact that somebody can get behind the wheel of a of a multiple ton vehicle and uh, and get off with a slap on the wrist if they're caught, that's kind of hilarious. You know what I mean? But if you're caught with like a thumbnail worth of a drug, you going away for a long time, baby. Don't get me started. Number 27, Instagram is the most effective social media platform for developing a cluster B personality disorder. I'm not a DMHP. Here we fucking go. But I had to attend the same all staff training at a mental health hospital. It is an alarming thing that you should check yourself before you wreck yourself. What? Okay. Well, I don't know. I feel again that some of these social media, like, here's the thing. You're either the type of person that can scroll down Facebook for forever or you're not. You know what I mean? And, you know, uh, it may seem rich coming from me who spends a good amount of time on Reddit, but even Reddit doesn't have its hooks in me in a way where I need to be on it at all times. I treat it like a live newspaper, my dude. I treat it like a, it's something that I pick up, go, is anybody dying? Is it, has, a, has a tragedy happened? You know what I mean? Has there been a mass shooting? Because I live in America, you know what I mean? Uh, is a, has a bomb dropped somewhere? Is a tsunami coming? That's what Reddit is to me. And yeah, when I pick it up and I don't see anything gangster happening, not that shootings are gangster, um, I scroll down and I look at these damn pictures of these stupid ass dogs until I reach something that's, you know, that scares me off the app, you know? There's plenty of things that scare me off the app, but there's plenty of things to hook me, you know what I'm talking about? People, people out here talking about, oh, he was just walking his dog and then a tire came out of nowhere. Oh my God, he's dead. He's dead. And then you see the subreddits, watch people die. You were like, I had no idea. Unexpected. Number 26. In my opinion, alcoholism. That's going to be the whole list. It's a lot more dangerous that than weed is. And has ended so many people's lives. That being said, I'm still going to get drunk, though. Okay. Okay, my man. Okay, my man. To everybody, uh... To everybody listening to this, whether you're on YouTube, whether you're on, uh... On Twitch, I just want you to know that you are loved. And I hope that you feel, you know, better. Following whatever may have occurred that made you feel not so great. Um, I don't know, man. I'm playing a little bit of Warframe. And, uh, <laughs> you know, hopefully that's going to bring me back to where I need to be. Bing bong. Wow. As we continue up to number 25, reloading and reloading Reddit with a right eye casting a glance to the envelope in the corner hoping it's red. Why the hell? Who are you trying to, who are you trying to? Oh, well, the red comments aren't just the red envelopes aren't just messages. They're also notifications of comments. So I guess if you're the type of fuck boy that's posting things on Reddit, trying to get people's comments on it, you need to you need to get something done. Join a community, a like minded uh, social group and uh, just talk about something that you're totally into. We all have interests. Otherwise, we would be, by definition, uninteresting. Roast. I love you all. Vanessa. Every night, Vanessa. I don't deserve every night, Vanessa. I deserve maybe weekly, Vanessa. You know what I'm talking about? I'm kidding. Not like this. Not like this. I I have to give it up. Not just because you obliterated the goal as usual instantly, but because you're Vanessa. And I hope that everybody has a Vanessa in their life, you know? Stream queen, stream queen, wow, stream queen, wow, love you, Vanessa. As we continue up this list of 35 types of psychotic behavior that are somehow socially acceptable, we arrive at number 24. The dudes in those wingsuits that glide really close to the damn mountains, huh? exactly. Somebody said a lot of them are dead, well, maybe a lot of them are out there that were suicidal in the first place, you know? And you know, you know, that song said that suicide is painless and it brings on many changes. One of those sentences is true. If you're flying close to a mountain in a wingsuit, my dude. So, hey, uh, you know, 
Ugh, God, splat. Fucking cartoon splat. Number 23, spending 20,000 plus on a wedding. You know, to some people, yes, that income is disposable, but not to everybody. And the worst part about the social conditioning that a lot of young dumb hoes don't understand is being like pretty much instilled into them in a way that rivals that is only rivaled by religion is that the day is no more significant than anything that you make it you know what i mean some girls some girls they get bent out of shape about some stupid shit because they were trained oh shit. hello good sir well hello my man instinct you know i appreciate you kevin I appreciate this in a big way. I want to give a round of applause for Kevin too. Wow. No, I appreciate that. What do I call instant Kevin? It's Kevin? Big worm Kevin? Nice. Nice. You know, I miss YouTube. Not because YouTube is YouTube, but because it was just easier. And I know a lot of people are missing out on these live because they can't get along with fa with twitch so you know i apologize apologize i apologize to any of those who may be you know watching this on youtube i appreciate you just as much i appreciate your likes and i appreciate you being you still finding time to throw this on in the background but um don't think i'm unaware that you know youtube is easier for a lot of you and if i could i would be streaming there but you know youtube is run by some robots that uh, they have programmed to just to just fuck people over. So I don't know where to go with it. All I all I know is that I will be here in a format for you when you're Snap ready. It also Damn chaotic, unending cosmos. What a name. <laughs> you know I appreciate that that subscription. I'm a slap. Slap it on some toast. A little bit louder. A little bit louder. To be honest, I feel like that should have been way louder, but it didn't sound like OBS was capturing super loud at all. That's interesting to say the least. I'll find a way to fix that. I truly apologize. But I appreciate you, Chaotic. And as we continue up this list, Endian says I've been watching on YouTube for a while. This is his first stream. We appreciate you, man. Nice seeing you. But as we roll up, we reach number 22. Working from 15 to 65 in hopes of having enough income to not go broke until you die, most likely a decade or so after retirement. <sighs> it's life, man, and it's six. Number 21, being interviewed for just a bit higher than minimum wage and there being four interviewers on the panel. I mean, you're trying to see if this person will be the best fit in your company, so you make them tell you about all their achievements whilst being scrutinized by four people, and then not give them the job if they're so nervous they miss out vital info. Oh boy. What interested you in the vacant position? A paycheck, bitch. You know? Do they want you to lie? Is that what this is about? Is that what every job's about, you know? Is that what is that how you and I was talking to my grandma about this recently, man. It's like if you're if you're trying to make it as an honest motherfucker, understand that it's going to take you not just twice, but oftentimes five times, ten times as long. You know what I mean? You could work until the the end of a year and make it up a few steps, but somebody who's willing to step on other people they can reach a, another fucking, they can reach another fucking uh, 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 atmospheric measuring. Yeah, you like that dumbass phrase? Dumbass phrase of the night, baby. Hashtag. All right, that's enough. Sorry. Number 21. Okay. Too old. Just a joke. Just a joke. Hashtag too old. Being interviewed for just a bit higher. Wait. Son of a bitch. I'm too old for this. Number 20. Okay. As we roll up. Mediums or psychics who basically make a living preying on vulnerable people. Hey, this is exactly what I mean, though, is the bottom line is to make money. You need to find saps. You need to find gullible people. You need to find people who are vulnerable and un unfortunately, by definition, ignorant. You know what I mean? A Carl salesman, a Carl salesman, <laughs> 
a car salesman makes money off of the ignorance of a person that comes in and doesn't understand that they're getting played, doesn't understand that they can get something, um, maybe for less than what it is being offered for. And uh, that's that, you know? That's the way that the world works. People are going to take advantage of those that they can, you know, get something from because they're willing to give that inch. And people are willing to take that marrow. Mediums and psychics, man. Remember, uh, God. Uh, South Park called him the biggest douche in the universe. Hmm. But, but who is he? John Edwards. I remember this douche. John Edwards. Psychic. It's been so long. That feels like a different era. He had, uh, he was on a show called Crossing Over, my dude. What a douche. (laughs) Poor John Edwards. Okay. He's just a man. Oh, my God. However, 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 forgive me. Number 21. This isn't the same list. Number 20. Mediums or psychics who basically made a living preying on vulnerable people who had probably recently lost someone that they loved dearly. So much so that they believe some asshole who can't wait to cash in on it. Oh, yes, your husband is definitely here, but he he to hear what he wants to say. I'm going to need about $25. Nice. Nice. Forgive me. I'm dying inside. As we continue. Number 19. To film someone during their weakest moment against their will and consent and post it on the, the WWW for people's amusement. Who the fuck writes WWW? You just gotta be fucking different. You know, I'm a, I call this like backwards blouse syndrome. Oh no. Were you out here trying so fucking hard, my dude, that it immediately makes you slappable? Shut the fuck. Ugh, the justifying argument is that since you are in a public space, you have no presumption of privacy and blah, blah, blah. Filming someone having a meltdown, a medical, a medication induced stupor or other vulnerable moment and putting it online is a terrible act of cruelty. Totally accepted. But if you think about it, borderline psychotic, it ain't that bad, bruh. It ain't that bad. Like, yeah, if it's clear that it's like kind of like breakdown-y and mental or blah, blah, blah. But if it's somebody like losing control in a way where, I don't know. I feel like there's a fine line between people being a douche um, and somebody like, <sighs> whatever, man. It comes with the territory. You got to get over it, man. That's the, that's the age we live in now. It's not, it's not somebody's fault. You, you out, y'all out here blaming the cameraman. That's like blaming the messenger in the old days. Don't shoot the messenger. I'm only, I'm only delivering the message. What? Man, get over it. People out here need to get over it. Number 17, workaholism. This is a reiteration of the post that we've probably read twice now. Taking pro- No, actually, this is probably a different uh, piece of icing because this is uh, catering to people who like working too hard taking pride in working 22 hours a day and getting 30 minutes of sleep seems really insane i can understand wanting to make a comfortable living and being passionate about what you do for work but when you can't turn it off and relax it shouldn't be worth celebrating this guy says i just got into a relationship with a workaholic and i am so much happier Oh, out of a relationship. Okay, it would have been funnier if he said, if he said that because it's like, wait a minute. <laughs> but you just said that bad, and now you in it that good? Oh my god! 
It'd be like playing a blaze, a blaze care. Oh, God damn it. I was going to say a blaze clarinet, but I meant bass clarinet. Oh. God, I can't breathe. And it only happens when I'm trying to do these lists. Hey guys, in the stream chat right now, why don't you tell me what your biggest issue is? Like, what's a problem that's getting on your nerves that you're sad about? What troubles you? If you're also watching the uh, Twitch stream after the fact. I mean Twitch stream. I mean, you know, on YouTube if you're watching it then. Tell me, uh, tell me what's up. Tell me what's bothering you. Let's talk about it together. Number 16. Treating animals like they're disposable. I worked at a PetSmart. Oh, man. We can make a list about PetSmart horror stories. And the way that they treated fish, small animals, and birds was terrible. I cried so many times in that store over my role in consigning these animals to neglect and abuse. Management never had my back and wouldn't refuse a sale. There was one time a guy came in with a bag of fish, clearly boiled in the bag because he had left them in the sun in the car. My manager didn't refuse the sale because he had a receipt from the previous day for the fish and we couldn't prove they died like that. The bag was hot to the touch. The water was green. And they had clearly not even made it to a tank. So yeah, this is psychotic. Oh boy. Bri Bri says my whole body, I hate it. Well, I was going to make a comment, but it's the kind of comment that could get me in trouble. And, uh... I don't, I don't need to get more people mad at me, you know? Transgenders, I love y'all, you know? Woo! How about that? Uh, 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 how about that? Uh, 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 uh. Okay. So love your body, guys. It's the only body you got. And you can, you can tone it with a lot of effort. I'm going to have to be doing that now. Number, well, I guess I should... Do, do, does my nose is my nose gonna allow this hold on number 15 that was pretty good people that think releasing an unwanted pet into the wild is okay jesus my ex and his family did this they had a red healer that they said was useless on the farm so they put him in the back of the ute oh y'all in australia drove off into a rural area kicked him out and laughed as he tried to chase after them while they drove away he's a domesticated dog he will die a slow horrible death from starvation i still get so upset even now i never forgave them for what they did also saw a video a while back of a lady that lived on a spot where people commonly dumped dogs a few people kicked the dogs as it tried to get back in their cars some dogs chased after their owner's car and got hit by another car. Some dogs stayed in the same spot, waited for their owners to come back and slowly starved to death. Fuck these people. Rest in peace, Rusty. You will always be a good boy to me. What is this, like a Futurama episode? Multiplied times a thousand? You like that reference. Hey. <laughs> Meg says, my huge lack of motivation. I just think you need the right spark. You need the right muse. And I hope that you find it soon because sometimes we all need a little push. A little poke. <sighs> a little fire lit under our ass. You know how it is. Number 14. The way we treat people on the internet. The complete and utter lack of empathy plus lack of remorse is a psychotic trait. Get a load of this fuck bag. You know what I mean? I bet he's the type of asshole that his parents just hated. So now he's out here trying to make the world a better place or some shit. One faggoty comment. I mean, I mean, not that word, you know. Actually, that's a word uh, from where I come from that means wonderful daffodil. Yeah. Yeah, they don't know my language, so you can't get me in trouble. They don't know my language. Uh, bass clarinet says I lack discipline. Oh, me too. I rack a discipline as well. Oh, my God. Uh, that was all a joke because of, you know, the gay. The, the gay. <sighs> I, met, I met the guy. What is wrong with me? What is wrong with me? Wait, 
wait, what the hell is Cactus saying? Oh, Cactus says I have endometriosis. It's shit, and I can't enjoy sex because of it. Okay. Well, I know a lot of girls in the stream that come in and say that they have that, too. Pretty scary stuff. Cactus says, I'll live. I just feel like I can't have a relationship with anyone because I'll disappoint them. Calm down. Even without, uh, you know, being able to enjoy sex, there will be plenty of ways you can disappoint a partner in a relationship. You shouldn't, you shouldn't let that be what stops you. Um, enjoy. You know, number 13. Putting the entire timeline and life of your child on Facebook while they grow up and have no control over parents posting everything about them. Give me a freaking second because my nose is... is... I appreciate you, my man, Kevin. As we continue, we're now at number 12. Astronomer here. It's actually a bit insane how often you can go to a conference in academia and see some 10-year-old guy tearing apart some young student with bullying, rude behavior for no particularly good reason except old guy wanting to show that he's smart. If said student has the gall to point out the aggressive behavior to anyone present afterwards, you will get a shrug along with, I've known him 10 years and that's just how he is. <laughs> Maybe mental notes that the student isn't tough enough if they can't handle verbal harassment from a stranger. I've always been appalled whenever I hear that as an excuse. And it would be like saying, I've known Uncle Ed all my life. And sure, he murders people, but that's just the way he is. You know what? This was, you know, I'm not supposed to use the R word in the fucking YouTube videos. But yeah, no, this is how some families excuse abuse from uncles, you know, but that's just how he is. What, mate? Some people out here talking like they're looking for a bullet, dude. Just because you're 10 year dead allows you to be a scumbag and try to flex on some little kid like he's supposed to know more than you or some shit or you're a teacher right which means that you're supposed to f gather a bunch of people that are not educated and by definition ignorant and then like and then teach them my dude and, and instead you're out here going oh y'all stupid y'all don't know that what the fuck y'all don't know that i can't believe y'all don't know that all right teacher please why don't you educate oh my god what a ego flex you sure you don't want to be a cop with that bullshit like what the fuck what are you doing number 11 child beauty pageants let's overtly sexualize super young children for literally no reason and have their attractiveness judged by adults it gives me chills it gives me chills child beauty pageants number 11 sorry Oh, we live in a funny world, man. It's funny because a lot of stuff is okay one day, but it ain't okay the next day. Y'all want to have 15-year-old celebrities shaking their ass on TV, talking about baby, 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 ooh. And then, and then like some guy wants to fuck a 15-year-old, and they're like, whoa, bro, what do you think you're doing? It's like, okay, bro. Okay, bro. Figure it out, media. Figure your shit out. Wasn't, uh... Wasn't one of those boys that they have fucking around shirtless in the Twilight movies underage at the time? Like, is that just okay? I don't know. Seems a bit gross to me. Seems like the type of shit that James Gunn had tweeted about 10 years ago. Speaking of 10, number 10. Advertisements for prescription medication in the United States. If you're going to a doctor for a problem, why not let the doctor suggest a medication if you need one? I mean, the advertisement isn't even aimed at selling the product directly. It's telling you to ask your doctor about it. Why the fuck would I want to influence my doctor in a medica medication choice? They're, they're the only one who went to school for it. Not me. Ooh. America. Boy. 
let's read a response for the uh, the beauty pageants ones. A response reads, My country banned beauty pageants for girls under 16 a few years back, and apart from the people organizing those pageants, nearly everybody was on board with the ban. The main complaint was, as you said, the over-sexualization of children. Even if, even before the ban, the bathing suit competition was already mostly absent from the children's pageants. Mostly? Oh yeah, little girl. What the fuck? What's wrong with y'all? Oh, boy. I mean, I know how y'all did it back in the day, marrying off 13-year-old kids and shit, but, like, can y'all just keep that stuff in the church? That's a pretty fucked up joke, Kyle. But that's, well, that's how it works. Be careful with what you do with your kids. I really hope to God that so many of the things that have become, you know, accepted... Uh, die out with this dying generation because you know some of the old people who just swear they know what they're talking about they'll be able to be the grandpas that we go okay grandpa do you want an ice cream on your way to the funeral you're dying we, we dug the hole for you grandpa grandpa you you want you, you you about to breathe your last breath grandpa i'm kidding holy shit can you imagine if somebody somebody's grandpa like isn't doing well and then this isn't like <laughs> that's not funny okay i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm really sorry like dude i hope you, i hope your grandparents are okay guys um My grandpas are dead. <sighs> but anybody else oh my god did they hear that oh no i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm not okay okay i'm not okay i need you guys to be there for me i'm so sorry i'm sorry I shouldn't do, I can't, number 10, number 10 we already read, you see, I need prescription medication now, I should ask my doctor, number 9, competitive dog breeding or whatever it's called, people who are obsessed with dog breeds appearance and prioritize uh, aesthetics before their health concerns, just look at the Schaefer with its hind legs or pugs who can barely breathe, and not to forget all the other dog breeds with an endless list of health problems, hey y'all wanna hear something pretty crazy? Um, before y'all try to flag me, YouTube, uh, Twitch, I'm a black man and I know what I'm talking about. So, you know, get crazy if you want to get crazy. But the white people, the crackers from back in the day, they used to breed black people to get that strong Negro that uh, that would be just just out in the fields all day. You know what I mean? And uh, I like to think <laughs> I like to think that this these, the, the dog breeders of today were the. Uh, were the people trying to uh, genetically, genetically engineer, so to speak, the strongest, oh, black, black gene. Oh man, three fourths, you know what I'm talking about? Unbelievable. America's history is just bloody, disgusting, and intolerant, my man. You know, somebody in the stream says super slaves. You know, you've heard of Super Saiyan, my dude. But in America, you know what they wanted? They wanted none of the work to be done by the white man. Whoosh. Fucked up, man. Fucked up. And when are we gonna get our reparations, baby? Ugh. Number eight. Jealous couples who keep tabs on each other's every move. Shared Facebook account. Check in by text every five minutes. Dirty looks when somebody attractive walks by, etc. Seriously, if there's so little trust, why even be together? I like to think some people are made for each other, <laughs> but I don't know. That it can't be healthy. Yeah, I think I think if two people were like that with one another, then they'd be over the moon with each other because you know they'd get as much of each other as each other wants. Shared Facebook accounts. I didn't even read that part. It must have been like, yeah. I, my brain rejected that. How fucking cringe is that? I know someone who has a shared Facebook account with her husband. I don't want to think about that. Yeah. Can we stop? Then they had twins. And then a daughter after the boys. I, that's it's fucking really cringe. It's really weird. Because I think it's just her Facebook and they just put both of their names on it now. I'm not sure. I don't get on there. Sorry, I'm reading Jordan. I'm pretty upset 
about what to do next in my life. I'm 20 years old and debating if I should go back to college this fall, which would make me a junior college, uh, which would make me a junior school, has always been so hard for me and I have been reading, I have reading comprehension issues. I'm determined to get a degree, but I don't even know what I'm going for. I mainly don't know if I want to become a statistic. If I drop out of school, I'm African American female, and I don't want to be a stereotype on paper, but I struggle too hard with school. I'm um, sorry for the long post. No problem. Um, this is going to be the most cliche advice I could throw at your ass, but stay in school as long as you can manage to. You know, the better the piece of paper that you walk out of there with, the better uh, situated you'll be to attack a job that will allow you to make more because more is very important in the world we live in right now because it is structured to fuck us over you know what i mean the way that the way that things are structured right now we are not meant to make it so the more money you can make the better the and you're making that more money by having a better piece of paper as far as uh what you can what you can manage of education I am. I will be the first to totally be understanding and admit. I feel like the 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 way our education system works is not for everybody. It's just not about teaching and learning. It's definitely about uh you know cramming and passing, and that's great. You know, and maybe it maybe it's just like a specific type of psychological torture that we all need to endure to prove that we can be the asshole that, you know, does a grindy job a nine to five, like they're describing in this list to put a roof over our heads and hate our life and, you know, uh, do the typical fucking family thing where we find some bitch or dude that we're into and and just uh, have a kid so that the cycle can continue. You know what I mean? But. Uh, as long as you, as long as school isn't um, something that you, can, uh, let's say, until you can't do it, until school fucks you so hard where you're just like, I, I give up, you might as well continue. Until at the very least, you have you have enough to qualify for what um, what will definitely put some shit on the table, as far as I'm concerned, as far as you're concerned as well, you know. Um, I know what it's like to struggle. Uh, you got to fight through that shit as best you can. Maybe take it down a notch. Uh, maybe, you know, I want to say budget or uh, or uh, try to slow down, unfortunately. And I know it seems like you're running out of time as well. But, you know, don't let it kill you. Don't let anything kill you, whether it's the education, whether it's you trying to situate yourself in a good job. You need to take things at a pace that you can handle, because if you if you take on too much, then that can be uh, that can be um, detrimental in a way where you're essentially sacrificing yourself for everything that you've worked to up until this point. I like to think of it as like a, a, a race where instead of just running at a steady pace, you give it your all and you pass the fuck out before you reach the finish line. So watch yourself. Pace yourself. That's the phrase that I can hit you with. And that applies to everybody that's listening to this, whether it be you in a relationship or you just trying to, you know, work towards something that you you definitely feel like you're not making the progress you want to make or maybe you're not even sure about what you want to do. You need to take shit a step at a time. And I know how cliche that sounds, but at the same time, um, what the fuck else can you do? You know, make some progress, because that's one thing that a lot of people around you are not doing. Um, even if you're not completely sure, work towards something that you can manage, even if it's small. Pick something you can manage right now, and if it's as simple as completing one class, if it's sim as simple as just doing the work that you're doing for another month, you know what I mean? Trying to situate a better job, trying to situate a raise, you know what I mean? Trying to trying to talk to the right people and get in the right position. Just take it a step at a time because it's a struggle, and it's probably always going to be a struggle, but um, the potential is within you. The potential is there, even if you beat yourself up. Even if you beat yourself up, how did we get here? Number seven, people who are obsessed with celebrities to the point of following their every move and talking about it with friends. It's not that psychotic, but we're a very social monkey type of fucking creature. You know what I mean? We see and we do and it's bad. Like, I, I think it's one thing for me to um, read a book and like that book. 
Maybe I read 10 books and I really like that book. So now I want to know about the mind who wrote that book, the author. I need to figure out who, who they are, what they're about. You know what I mean? I want to get inside their head. I go to a QA, and a I talk to them, ask them a couple of questions. Maybe I get them to sign something that I've done. Maybe I'm following them to see what they do in the future. But do I want to know what they eat? Do I want to know where they hang out? Do I want clothing that they've worn? Come the fuck on, my dude. If they make a video game, if they make a movie, if they make a TV show adaptation of the books that this motherfucker wrote, am I falling in love with some of the dudes in there because they're pretty, they're beautiful, they're attractive? Hell to the fuck nah. Everybody's different. We all have different criteria for what we find appealing, for what we're into, you know what I mean? Some Sometimes we can just see a dazzling pretty face and that'll be the end of it and we're crazy about these people, but at the same time, everything in moderation, my man, you know? I think one of the, I think the, if I had to name three women that i found attractive to the point where i actually gave a shit not to like follow them not to like seek their autograph but like they're actually something to look at for me it'd be the one girl who was the 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 companion in doctor who her name was like clara in the context of the show i don't remember what her name is in real life um elena bonham carter who, to be f fucking frank with you, yes, she's kind of cute or whatever, but it's her, her, it's her acting ability that, you know, floored me. I really like what a crazy bitch she can be when she wants to be. She's a very talented actress, and that's what I love about her. Um, and the third one, I think, was, uh, well, I think Scarlett Johansson looks good. And I'm not saying she's a bad actress, but I think it's more about looks for me with her. But Luna Lovegood, the, the girl who plays her, she's really awkward looking. Like, <laughs> okay, that's weird to say, but I like that. You know what I mean? You guys ever see Christina Ricci when she was younger? Oh my God. I know this is like purely ridiculous and out of nowhere. Christina Ricci. Um, When Christina Ricci was younger, no. Huh? I liked her oh, I a her. lot. I loved her. I absolutely loved her. Pretty much everything I've seen her in. She was fucking... She's adorable. I love her. I'd eat that up. Do you get what I'm saying? I know. And... Precious. And she's not, like, hot in the way that, like, a lot of... No. Uh, okay, I gotta stop using that word. A lot of asshole guys will look at some bitch like Megan Fox and be like, oh, look how great she looks. Like, like you can decipher that from under the, the pounds of makeup on her clown face. This reptilian bitch, you know what I'm talking about? That's not the type of beauty that I'm looking for. Maybe there's like a girl next door aspect to Christina Ricci that I'm into. You know what I mean? And again, uh, for me, it's not always just physical. I like uh, what they do. I like their roles, etc. Like, you know, I like what they put forward. But am I, you know, come on. Am I calling people up? Am I mentioning her to people that I know don't have that common interest? Am I am I staked out outside of their home? Am I making videos where I kill myself? Like with that Bjork asshole? It's like wild. It's wild, my dude. How much celebrity is celebrity? Because again, ain't nothing wrong with seeing somebody dribble a ball up and down a court because you've tried to play basketball and that game just fucked you up. And you're like, how the hell does this guy do it? It's like magic to me. So you go watch this guy at a game and he's throwing his jersey at you. You want to get the ball that he was using. This is a ball that he touched. That's the jersey that he wore. Hell yeah, man. That's something cool to have. But what, how much is too much? You know, you know, maybe you follow this guy on Twitter. Maybe you follow this guy on Instagram. But are you going to be staked out? You know what I mean? It reminds me of Stan by Eminem, you know, because to me, there's a different the difference between just being a fan and and ridiculous fanaticism but hey i could go on about this all day my point is there's a fucking limit and everything needs to everything needs to be exercised in moderation so number six on the list of 35 types of psychotic uh behavior that's socially acceptable what is this oh fuck go back <laughs> Number six, Instagram influencers who have hundreds of thousands of followers who are literally filming everything they do and think. Well, when they're pretty enough, people will follow that, dude. You can tell the people they spend time with are uncomfortable with constantly filming, yet they still do it. And it's because people keep watching. <sighs> Viewing life 
through someone else's camera and everyone is completely okay with it. Look, man, I, I'm scared. <laughs> and that's all I have to say about that one. That's all I have to say about that one. Because you know what? Here's the bottom line. Here's the bottom line. When the internet first booted up, okay, I'm, a, I'm, an old, I'm an old enough man to where I can tell you guys right now, there have been there has been a time where I have typed certain aspects of my interest into the internet and nothing came up. That's how old I am, where I had to wait for a while for the internet to catch up. I'm talking about pre like LimeWire. I'm talking like pre Kazaa. I'm talking pre Napster days. Y'all don't know shit about that. Y'all don't know back then on the internet. Uh, the bottom line was, you know, maybe I'd put, maybe I'd put, I'd push, put the key, push the keyboard away, pick up a controller and I'd play a little video game. And I would think to myself, Hey man, wouldn't it be cool if the same way that I pick up a, you know, controller and I control this dude and I'm looking around with the eyes of this dude and I'm pushing the stick and it makes him walk around. Wouldn't that be crazy if like, you know, I could control a real guy in real life. And not like a drone that's just flying around and visually looking, but like a person that I could have interact with other people, go to different places, uh, converse, you know, fucking jump in a car. You know, I could just basically like live a life through this guy's eyes. Think of like second life, think of VR chat, but instead of just having the voice of a guy walking around, you are another person and you're controlling that person. This shit on fucking on on Instagram is this shit that you see on, you know, Twitch IRL, the shit that you see on YouTube when people just, you know, are literally just putting the camera on and going out and doing nothing. That's one step removed from you being able to control that. Do you know what I mean? And I'm sure because we live in a world where we can't think of an idea that hasn't been hasn't been done. We can't think of something that hasn't been marketed because if we could alter these ideas, we'd probably make in millions in, in the way of at least views or attention because the first people to do some things, no matter how stupid they are, they get that attention. Um, what I'm going to say is this, because we can't think of like, remember Twitch play Pokemon? If you don't know what that is, it was basically Pokemon, the game being played by the chat and say like 50 people in the chat said up, but 70 people in the chat said down it would make the character go down. And over time, the game was getting played by just people spamming buttons in the chat. It was the craziest thing in the world. But what happens to Twitch plays pe people? What happens when a guy is willing to walk around and much like, much like a Fallout game or like a text-based adventure, but real life, you know, Twitch decides what this dude says, what this dude does, where this guy goes. People are doing much, 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 much more for attention what's to stop them from doing that for the money for the views for the fame you know and that's why i say i'm scared okay when i look at this shit because when little kyle was on the internet just thinking man it'd be cool if i could just pilot a real guy if i could pilot a guy it would be crazy but that's all it was was a thought nigga i never thought that we would arrive here i never thought that the day would come because some people are so bankrupt of meaning of purpose of of a reason to exist that they will do what people say for that cash and hey man cash is alluring because we all have problems that money can fix but do you have a price on your head you know what i mean well we ain't getting nothing but twenty dollars is twenty dollars you know what i mean and it's like how much how much for your life you know walk towards that cliff will that day come will that day come where one day we're watching a man respond to action from his stream chat from his donators where they tell him to kill himself and he does it and the answer to that question is the day has already come and I've seen some shit on the internet that would make y'all just want to stop being on the internet or if you're like me go damn if I find too many more videos like this, I can make a compilation for a site that doesn't exist because YouTube ain't gonna let me post some shit like that. Number five, 
checking people's online status, last active, last seen across various social media frequently. Ooh, you mean stalking? These people voluntarily signed up for these dumbass apps that let people know when they were active and shit like that. They could be invisible, but they choose not to be. And yeah, maybe they don't expect people to be creepy, but yeah, they also voluntarily signed up for these dumbass apps that are putting them on blast as far as how frequently they're on it, when's the last minute they sent a message, when they read your shit, you know what I mean? Shut the fuck up, you know what I mean? Shut the fuck up, this guy. I like this one because it goes back to the other one when people are all like, when people are mean to people on the internet, like that's not a real person, that's a real person. The person continues to say, technology is an incredible thing. All right, Gramps. And there is no denying that social media brings us closer to those. Man, this this guy's like, this guy's really approaching Kyle talk. What's he going to start talking about? Where is it going to stop? Is it stream chat going to control a guy and then he walks off a cliff? Before it was like, if your friends jumped off a cliff, would you follow them? But now it's like, if your stream chat told you to jump off a cliff, would you do it? How much they donating, mom? <laughs> Butter Slice, you better not walk off any goddamn cliffs, goddammit, Butter Slice. Mom, you don't understand. You didn't have a stream chat back in your days. And I, if you did, I bet they couldn't donate. I bet you they didn't have those stream labs, mom. Mom, you don't understand, mom. I'm gay. Number four, the fact that you have to fork out up to 10K for a proper funeral. It's true. It's true. What a racket. What a racket. It costs to die, you know? Ooh. Sorry, my face contorted because it's a disgusting aspect of life. And it's a terrible, it's a terrifying thing to have an older person in your family who has their shit together tell you, this is the money that's put away so that it doesn't cost you a fight. Oh. God, that, that hit me wrong. That hit me hard. That kind of sucks. You know? And worse, you think about if something happened to you, you don't have the money to, to give to whoever. Oh, man. Somebody just went through a traumatic loss and now they have to set this shit up, man. Come on. Hey, y'all know that Black Mirror, Mirror episode I'm thinking about with the, you know the one. You know the one where they go, hey, man. So I see you missing your monkey balls. But wouldn't it be cool? <laughs> oh, my God. Number three, parents not preparing their children for adult life to keep them from moving out. That's a different kind of sabotage. Someone said this one boggles the mind. No, Jimmy doesn't need to prepare for med school while he's in elementary, but holy crap. They can start learning appropriate levels of responsibility. I apologize for that. Burp. I think I'm dying. I need to get out of here. I think I need to get out of this list. I think I'm dying right now. Number two, hyper aggressive and infighting behavior in a management role. Just, you know, people fighting at the workplace, right? Someone says it's so counterproductive too. Once fear and politics kick in, people stop warning or helping each other. Suddenly projects start being late and lower quality because people are too scared or bitter to mention delays or get help for something they're struggling with. Well, life, man. Number one, the compulsion to put absolutely everything you do and experience on social media for people to enjoy. When you're, when you're really hoping that they'll envy you. Ugh. Ugh. Y'all gotta run from this social media shit sometimes, man. What's worse is when oversharers have kids and they post photos of every single thing that their children do with little to no regard for their privacy. We don't even need to talk about it. The internet should just be for us to re re responding to, uh, to, um... Responding to bad uh, DC trailers. I think this is implying that all the Sony exclusives have like long ass movies in them. <laughs> Somebody said, remember, Metal Gear Solid 4 holds two world records for this longest sequence 
of a cutscene at 71 minutes at the very end of the game. The longest individual cutscene is 27 minutes within the first sequence. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Oh, we out here talking about the P90. Oh, this is watch people die. Ooh, motorcyclist. Chris Chan? What the fuck? That ain't real. Why do I get cucked by memes? Okay. <laughs> Guys, I love you to death. I will catch you soon. I'm gonna get, uh... I'm gonna get my shit together. And you're gonna get more. Look out for another one coming soon. A special thanks to Vanessa. A special thanks to Kevin for being amazing. I am I am honestly going to be playing Warframe soon. So hopefully you guys will be interested in that. It's a very low stress game and I love it. It's pretty much a better version of Destiny. And uh hopefully we can play it uh together. Um I'll see you guys soon. I love you all. And I want you to have a wonderful night. Stay amazing. Bye. Wait, what? Who's the wrong person? Oh. No, Dia's there. Bye, Dia.